I've now recently hit over a million pounds in revenue since starting my businesses. You could see people further up the ladder on the path that you were on at the nine to five and you realize the stress, the long hours that they were working just wasn't the, the ladder you wanted to be climbing, right? The closest point I could say to being like an enough and an is enough point was a client success coach and got a successful business or multiple businesses now. It's fascinating to hear the journey that you took. And I think I wish I'd never checked my emails last thing on that Friday. And I realized that the whole business was sort of collapsing around me. To take lessons from other parts of your life and then say like, I got through that. I figured that I knew it would make me stronger as a result of it. It's scary really how, how fast and how far you can get once you put in work and just set your sights on becoming a little bit better every day. Welcome to the Dropship Unlocked podcast. I'm Lewis Smith, the founder of Dropship Unlocked, and with me is our client success coach, James Erdley. Now, when we're not recording the podcast episodes, we're running our own e-commerce businesses and helping aspiring entrepreneurs launch their own high-ticket dropshipping businesses. Keen to build your own six or even seven bigger business? My book, The Home Turf Advantage, is your blueprint for launching a profitable online store. Grab your copy at htabook.com today and let's get you started. Now sit back, relax, and let's unlock your potential with the Dropship Unlocked podcast. Today, we have got an incredibly inspiring story that's very close to home for us at Dropship Unlocked. It's about someone who sat exactly where you might be sitting right now in a nine to five job, dreaming of more freedom, more control, and yeah, more financial independence. The things that we were all seeking at one point. And that person is our very own client success coach at Dropship Unlocked and co-host of the Dropship Unlocked podcast, James, who's here with us today. And he's here to share his incredible journey from being tied to a desk right through to building a business that's not just survived, but thrived and has recently crossed the 1 million mark in turnover. So this will be a story of success. It'll be a roadmap for anyone looking to break free from the norm and chase their entrepreneurial dreams right through from the initial way that he heard about dropshipping through to getting a business that's now up and running and has just hit seven figures in revenue. So if you've ever wondered whether it's really possible to transform your life with a high ticket dropshipping business, then you're going to want to listen closely to today's episode because James is going to take us back to his life during the nine to five grind. So James, maybe take us back in time if you can. What was your life like during the nine to five grind and what was your daily routine? What sparked the realization that you wanted something a bit different from the norm? Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Lewis. I'm excited to share my story today. And I think my story does start going into an e-commerce business about 10 years ago when I when I left school. And I'll start from that. We'll go right through my journey, my story today to where I am today, because it's, uh, yeah, lots of ups and downs along the way, which I'm sure we'll, we'll dive into. Um, and I think an update is a little bit overdue. I know we, we first sat down and had a chat together about 18 months ago when I first joined the Dropship on Lock T. And a lot's changed since then for me in my life. And I can see clearly how I got from that position to where I am today. And I want to share that so hopefully listeners can relate and get a lot out of it so they can achieve um, the same level as, of success and go beyond as well. So a few years back, as I say, when I, when I left school, I learned a few really important lessons that have stayed with me and have been part of my belief system ever since. And one of those was, you know, at 16 in, in the UK, we get our GCSE results. And for me... That was an incredibly disappointing day. So I looked at my sheet of paper. I was on my bed, actually, when I opened up the paper. I was on my own. And I looked at that results. And they were very average. And it was very disappointing for me to, to realize that I hadn't taken it seriously enough. And I was now staring back at this piece of paper that was telling me, if you don't put in a lot, you won't get much out. And it also taught me that there is a chance in life that you won't achieve the potential that you've got. You know, my actual grades were below the expected grades that you get given earlier in the year. And it taught me that there is a real chance in life, lots of people do it, where they have this potential that they can achieve and you don't get there because you don't put the time in, you don't take things seriously. And since then, I think it's really taught me a fear in a healthy way, a fear of not meeting expectations, a fear of letting myself down. And that came from that early formative years that we learned so much around that time. I've also surrounded by my parents with, with you know high expectations for me 
and my twin brother, who's you know, high achieving twin brother. And so there's that concoction of competition as well as wanting to achieve my own potential. And that really taught me some lessons. Now, at the time, I wouldn't have been able to give the language to explain that. I wouldn't have been able to explain that that's how I was feeling. But it definitely sparked a fire in me and it sparked a fear that stayed with me of not meeting my potential. And it's not something that keeps me up at night, of course, but it's something that I use as fuel to go on to achieve what I want to achieve and go after the success that I want to achieve as well. And so I taught, taught me some great lessons at that point. So I knew that ultimately, if I wanted to carve out my own path in life, it was going to be up to me. It was going to be up to what I put in to my life, because uh, ultimately what you get out of life is what you put in. Um, and I knew that if I was going to get out what I wanted to get out, you know, there was a chance that I might not meet my potential if I don't go for it, if I don't put a lot into it. So that realization was coming about. But what I did after that point, it wasn't overnight. It wasn't instant because there's a hell of a lot of uncertainty at that time in your life. And I was one of those people that I had no idea what it was I was going to do when I grew up. And when people asked me at that age, what do you want to do? Where do you want to be when you're older? I had that feeling in my stomach and and, and it felt tight chested almost because I didn't want to be asked that question. I had no idea and it was uncomfortable to be put on the spot and asked about where you wanted to be. So instead, I just knew that I needed to get a job. And my first job actually was just laboring on building sites. I was given an opportunity by my girlfriend's dad. I'm so grateful for the opportunity just to have some work. And so I was behind a wheelbarrow, pushing dirt around. I was um, helping put cement mix together, holding up plasterboards, just work ethic in general, dealing with customers, that sort of thing. From there, because I was in the construction industry, I then thought, well, how can I turn this into a more of a long-term career? So I got into a, a job at a housing association. So in my local town, so I grew up in Shrewsbury, which is in Shropshire, went into a, working at a housing association. And then suddenly I had this corporate nine to five job where I sat behind a desk and I really got the, the flavor. I got the realization of what a life looks like for a lot of people, which is Monday to Friday, nine to five, head down. Each day looks kind of similar. Didn't feel particularly challenged. Didn't feel like I was really going after my goals. Didn't feel like I was on the right path. But I couldn't put my finger on exactly what it was that I wanted. I just knew that the path that I'd been taken on so far, which was sort of the path that I was expected to take in a corporate type of job, it wasn't going to be for me. Sort of blindly led myself down that path, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was exactly that I wanted at that time. Yeah, that's an incredible journey. I think like explaining how that fire was initially lit when it sounds like your first uh, maybe mismatch between expectations and then what life delivered was that GCSE results day and I you know I think we can all remember that vividly like however we felt it's a real high pressure day isn't it and, and we're very young it's like you're not really that equipped to deal with that kind of news especially if it's not good news and I think that the fact that you channeled that and used that to drive you even to this day is, is incredible and actually it, it sounds like that was probably one of the biggest advantages for you early on if you'd have got amazing grades maybe you'd have ended up being a bit more you know complacent throughout life and perhaps you wouldn't have had that same drive and fire that's got you to a seven-figure e-commerce business owner that you are today so I think these things will happen for a reason don't they and um yeah your story about being surrounded by a high achieving family a high achieving twin brother that's that's difficult you know when you're you've got such a close relative and they're they're on a, a great trajectory and you know it's tough and it sounds like you've experienced all kinds of work leading up to yeah, everything from like the laboring job like you said very manual very hands-on right through to to the nine to five at the housing association you experienced that but it sounds like you knew something was missing and yeah like you say being blindly led down that path not many people question it not many people do it's, it's just something that we we often feel like that is just the the way to continue through life and, and that's it you don't argue with it you don't change it you can't do anything about it but can you share a moment or an event that pushed you to consider entrepreneurship as your path to freedom from that nine to five role at the housing association like was there a certain a point along the journey where you just thought okay that's it enough is enough I'm doing this yeah it, it was more of a gradual wearing down and a realization for me instead of like a enough is enough point you know I could probably point at a few different moments along that journey but overall it was that feeling and hopefully I'm painting a picture of knowing that something wasn't quite right being in a nine to five job, which was what was expected of me. And I was following that path. And if I'd followed that path, you know, maybe in 40, 50 years time, when I was 50, 60, 70 years old, 
Maybe I'll be a director. Maybe I'll be a head of service in a housing association. But it just didn't sit right with me. I could see the people that were in that position and had been in a nine to five job and had followed the ladder and they weren't fulfilled. And I could see the type of jobs they were doing. I could see the stress they were under. I could see the hours that they're working. And I knew that that wasn't the right direction. So although I didn't know what was the, the right direction for me, I knew that wasn't it. So then it had to become a bit of a gradual realization of, okay, if that's not the right direction, then what is? And that led me down a a rabbit hole of trying to work out what success would look like for me. And I think it's important to define success. So, and I define success for myself as freedom. So success is freedom for me. It, It means that you're free to do what you want, when you want, from wherever in the world you want. And it, you know, it sounds like potentially it's, it's a selfish pursuit, but when you're successful and when you're free, you can then do a lot more for other people around you. And that's what I ultimately wanted to do. And I knew I wasn't heading in that direction of freedom down that particular route, but it wasn't a quick and easy decision. So it, it did take time for me to get the courage up and, and find out where I wanted to go. The closest point I could say to being like an enough and an is enough point was in 2020, when I was given the opportunity to see what a different life looks like. And it was in 2020, I was stuck in this nine to five job. I'd been there for a couple of years and I was getting weared down. And I thought, well, I want to adventure. I want to see the world. So I went traveling and I went with my girlfriend, still my girlfriend today. We went to New Zealand and uh, really, really fortunate to go out there. But what I could see while I was out there was people that were there for an indefinite amount of time. Whereas we always had that return trip booked there was always a date there was always something in the mind you know we weren't earning any money out there while we were there so I realized that there was always going to be an end date and I was very envious of the people that could make money while they were there so they could continue that journey and of course because the the events of 2020 we went in February so in March we were still there and the world was shutting down around us and we got the the news by looking on our phone that all the airports were starting to close and travel was going to be impossible very soon. So we quickly had to hop on a flight and get out and get home as quickly as we could. And we left New Zealand on the Saturday and they closed all of the airports in New Zealand on the Monday. So we really did have to scramble and get out of the country before we would have been stuck there for a little while. But what that did, again, similar with the GCSE results that you picked up on, Lewis, at the time, it's an incredibly disappointing moment That trip was meant to last six months and it lasted about three and a half weeks. But in hindsight, what it actually meant was that I always had that bug still inside me to travel. It was cut short and I don't know if I'd have had that trip, whether that would have satisfied that urge for me to explore and travel. And I don't know if I would have still had that fire inside me, that urge for freedom. And I had from that trip suddenly worked out that there were people out there that were able to live and travel while earning money. And that stayed with me. And I knew that I just had to figure out how I could also do that for the long term. Yeah, there's a real recurring theme there, isn't there, where you you seem to uh, react best in a way when you get hit with a a disappointment about an event that mismatched what your expectation was. Like when reality didn't match up to the expectation, you didn't hit your GCSE result or you didn't get to travel for six months. Suddenly you're like, hang on a second, I need to fix this because I don't want something taken away from me. They say that we'll work a lot harder to get something back that is taken away from us than we will to just go after something in the first place. So it's quite nice that you can use that taste of freedom that you had to be like, okay, I had this cut short and it was really bad timing. Like, you know, it's terrible um, a a timing with with going traveling at the time that you did, obviously the whole world, like when does that happen, right? But I think, again, these things happen for a reason because if you'd had this cushy traveling experience and you'd stayed in hostels and come back and then everyone hits you with those lines like, oh, it's back to real life now, back to reality. You'd have probably bought into that myth, right? Of, you know, we're just like everyone else who goes on a holiday. We did a gap here and now we're, we're back to the nine to five grind. But you were like, no, I saw people there who were digital nomads, who had that permanent freedom, who didn't have to rush back because they were settled. They could make their income from there. And I think the fact that you, like you said, it didn't happen overnight for you. There wasn't a specific moment, but it was that gradual shift. And you could see people further up the ladder on the path that you were on at the nine to five. And you realized the stress, the long hours that they were working just wasn't the the ladder you wanted to be climbing, right? And so it's a very astute observation to see that success isn't necessarily always linked to finances. Of course, that's part of it. 
but seeing success as freedom, autonomy, control, and and realizing that that allows you to then be able to give back more to people later on in life once you're completely free. Such a freeing and liberating realization. So fantastic that, that you made that. Now, obviously, that's a great thing to realize, but then beginning that journey towards owning your, your business for the first time must have been pretty daunting because you'd never run a business before, right? So how did that feel? 100%. Yeah, just incredibly daunting, really. I had no direct role models around me in my life, no family or friends that were entrepreneurial. So there's nobody to look at and really model and go after in my immediate vicinity. So that leads to feeling obviously daunted by the, the challenge. But these lessons that I was learning was that you have to go after it in life. It's not going to be given to you. If I carried on passively like I was, like passively getting jobs that were sort of given to me or it looked like that was the right thing to do, if I carried on in that way, I was never going to get to where I wanted to get to. Um, but what I realized I had to do for myself to get over that feeling of, of being daunted by the challenge ahead was to create a mental pain for myself. I think we, we would try and run away from pain a lot, but actually we can use pain to our advantage if it's used in the right way. So for me, when I was looking at my options of staying where I was versus starting a business that I've got no experience of and nobody around me had done, it was easy if you look at it you know, at, at the periphery that the going after a new job is the more scary route because I had a you know cushy nine to five, I had a salary, uh, you know, I, I was looked after, I had some savings. You have to really dive in to, to give yourself the motivation to go after something that's more uncomfortable. So I had to create that mentally for myself. You, know, you hear about some people's stories where they literally get ground down to having nothing. So they don't need to create any mental pain because they've already got a lot of pain in their life already that spurs them on to success. But because I didn't have that, I had a you know mediocre, uh, it was this comfortable mediocrity that I had I had to create a mental pain. So the way I did that was to visualize myself in 40, 50 years time, uh, or even five years time, looking back at myself, not being proud of how I'd spent my time. Um, and I made, and I visualized that, I used paper to write this down, visualize exactly how disappointed I'd be if that's where my life got to. And that created an incredible amount of pain in my mind that I could clearly feel of, of not being proud of myself in the future. And that meant when I then compared the two options of staying where I was, and leading to that pain versus starting a new job, it became easy. The easier path, the less painful path was to go after my you know, my dreams and start an entrepreneurial business. And that became a lot less daunting then than staying down the same road. So I had to create that. Um, and, and that really was a lot of motivation for me to go after what I wanted to do. Um, and another thing that happened around that time, which I want to mention as well, because as I reflect on my story, I, I know there are a few pivotal moments. And around that time in my life, I was, I was only young still, and I uh, I lost my dog in a in a road accident, tragic road accident, and she was only two years old, and it was a it was horrible. I, I was there at the time, I was with her when she, when she passed away, and um, really difficult time. It's still difficult to think about and talk about now, but again, a very formative experience to go through at a young age, because you realise that life can be cut short. And you do only get one chance. That was my first experience of loss. And I had that at a young age. And the lessons it taught me have been incredibly valuable to this day. So her character, anyone that has a dog knows that dogs have their own personalities. And and she was somebody, you know, a dog, not a person. But she, 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 her character was really full of life, full of energy, you know, enjoying every day, just present in the moment. And to see that taken away at just two years old, much before her time, was was really hard for me at a young age to go through. So looking back at it, again, it, you can see the lessons that come from this. It taught me that you get one life, you don't know how short it can be. And now I've really formed a strong opinion that we really have to make the most of this one life that we that we get given. Yeah, that's really, really powerful. And, and hearing how much that impacted you and what you took from it as well, I think. It's just credit to you for, you know, some people would just become extremely angry about an event like that or, you know, it, hold real resentment but again you used it to your advantage you used that and you know you you fondly remember your dog's personality to this day but I think the most important lesson that, that could have come from that sunk in you know so it wasn't in vain and, and you believe and realize now that you do have one life and you got to make the most of it you know you got to like it can it could be cut short at any moment so absolutely I think 
certainly growing up, like you say, having no business or entrepreneurial role models, if you're just taking that passive approach, like you say, and just waiting to be handed the opportunity to go and live the life that you want, it's often not going to happen. And so I think the most dangerous to pl- place to be is in the middle, isn't it? It's that tolerable mediocrity. If you're at rock bottom, like you say, and you've got a horrific set of circumstances and you like you have that fire to escape it, sometimes that's the most advantageous thing you can have to spur you on. But when you don't have that, you have to sometimes just create that in yourself. And so creating that mental pain and visualizing your regret in advance of like looking back on what your life could look like and how you'll think back and think, did I waste those opportunities? Did I not live that one life that I had to its fullest potential? Such a fascinating way of thinking. And I think it's it's testament to where you're at today. So it's it's fantastic. I mean, how did you go from that position, right? So you, you kind of made those realizations. You realized you only have one life. You want to make the most of it. How'd you go from that position to starting your first business? Like you must have faced some fairly big obstacles early on to get started. Yeah, 100%. So in the, these lessons were teaching me a lot about how I viewed my life and the values that I was creating at the time. And 100%, I decided that I was going to start a business. I knew from the very start it was going to be full of ups and downs and it didn't disappoint. It was certainly full of ups and downs, which we'll go into, but it all makes the journey a lot more worthwhile in, in the long run. So um, yeah, so at that point, you know, I got to this realization. I'd got these really strong beliefs about needing to make the most of my life, um, not wanting to waste my potential, realizing that you get out what you put in. Those sort of things were going around my mind. Um, and then I had that mental pain of staying where I was. And it all led to searching for businesses that I could run and I could create for myself. And remember, I'd also realize what success meant to me. So success was freedom. So when I was looking at what opportunities could I take on to get myself to that success, they had to be opportunities that led to freedom. And so you, you're presented with, we're lucky, we're very fortunate in, in this year, in you know, today's day and age, there are lots of opportunities when you search for which businesses to start. So you have to have a bit of a filter of what type of businesses you want to start. So for me, the filters for me was that I needed to be a small initial financial investment, uh, you know, just a few thousand pounds I had in savings. You know, it needed to be no previous business experience required. As I say, I had no experience in a job that couldn't be further away from uh, an e-commerce business. And I also needed it to be scalable so I could reach all of my lifestyle goals that I had for myself. So that's how I got drawn to online business, firstly, because then you can make money from wherever you are in the world. And I had that bug from not finishing my traveling trip. And then from online business, I then got into realizing that e-commerce, and it's it's presented to you as drop shipping, it was the best opportunity for me. So selling physical products meant that I could do it all from a laptop. And it would be a, a business that runs without the necessity of my time. But, you know, because there are other online businesses that are very dependent on your time. You could be a freelancer on Upwork and Fiverr. You could do that, of course, from anywhere in the world. But if you stop working, you stop earning. So instead, I needed to get into a running a business that was con- going to be completely de- independent of my time. So that way I could have the freedom and the success that I was looking for. So they're like absolutely set dropshipping e-commerce businesses. That's for me. Uh, and I started with the typical naive start into the world of, of e-commerce. And I started with traditional drop shipping, which is not what we what we do now, Lewis. And that was selling cheap products that come from AliExpress or Alibaba. They're on the other side of the world, often in China. So it's like three or four week delivery time. And what that led to was lots of of, uh, of obstacles and upset straight away. You know, the, the obstacles came thick and fast initially. I had returns to deal with. I had difficult supplier communication. You know, the products were poor quality. The, the you know impatient customers because delivery, to be fair, was three or four weeks. The main obstacle, though, out of all this that put it all to an end, was that ultimately it wasn't a profitable business for me. I was investing more money in Facebook ads that that I was making back in sales. So that put it all to an end. So I realised that I needed to pivot. This wasn't the right model for me, and it stung. You know, I'd lost, I'd lost like hundreds of pounds into the thousands of, of, of spending in this venture. And I realized it, I was going down the wrong path the whole time. So I knew that I had to pivot. I wasn't going to give up that easily. I learned a lot of lessons from doing that, you know, but, but I knew that I would, I would find a way. I knew there would be a way and I knew that I would find out what that way is. So from that initial upset, 
knowing that I had to pivot, but knowing that I was onto something, I then came across Dropship Unlocked, Lewis, and it was your face that came up on the, on the YouTube ads. And suddenly all of the issues that I could see and was experiencing with the type of business that I was growing at the time were answered by the, the home turf advantage model that you that you pre- presented and you brought to, to me. Suddenly I could see how I could sell products online, but there's going to be good supplier communication, high quality products, fast delivery, and it was going to be a much more simple, you know, not easy, but more simple business to run. And it still had all of the benefits of e-commerce. So that's when I got started you know, a few weeks later with Dropship Unlocked. Started my, my business a, a couple months after getting into Dropship Unlocked. And then I was making high ticket sales to UK customers. Um, and that was the start of you know, you know, its history from there, really. Yeah, what a journey. It's fascinating. And we should probably mention as well that you're obviously now a member of the team as well. You work with us as a, a client success coach and got a successful business or multiple businesses now. It's fascinating to hear the journey that you took. And I think going from those initial, what stood out to me is the beliefs, the realizations, the mindset. It, we always talk about this as the foundation, but I think sometimes people just sweep past it because they assume that it's not critical to achieving the end result. But you, from hearing your story, it was firmly built on solid foundations of belief, mindset. You knew what you wanted to do. You had a clear definition of what uh, success meant to you, which was freedom, time freedom, financial freedom. You knew the goal. And I loved your rational approach of filtering that down, looking at all the opportunities that are out there and then saying, okay, so I want something that's, that I can stand behind that doesn't have huge financial capital outlay to get started. It's beginner friendly, it's scalable, it's remote, you know, so you're not going to like different rental properties and trying to like renovate houses and stuff like you're, you wanted to do it from a laptop so that you could go to New Zealand and run it from there just as easily as you could in the UK. And it, I think it's a very rational approach to take. And of course, we all go down that rabbit hole, don't we? And we find an initial business model for you. It sounds like it was the the low ticket China drop shipping model that's made so popular with AliExpress. And you you encountered the same issues that were the reason why we created Dropship Unlocked and the Home Turf Advantage model. You hit all those returns, the refunds, the disappointed customers, and not to mention making no profit. So you know, it, it you start to think, is this even a business? But your tenacity and determination to stick with it and say, well, I'm not accepting defeat here. This is just a learning milestone. This is a hurdle. And then pivoting and adopting the home turf advantage model, which has since taken you on to to a million pounds is fascinating. And um, yeah, it's great. And I mean, we're only at the beginning of your journey still, I feel like from hearing this. So it's, it's great to dive in and hear this. And I'd love to do another one of these you know, when you hit the first 5 million and 10 million, because I, I think you're just going to continue to grow at that, that exponential pace. But a lot of listeners to this are probably thinking, okay, fine. You decided you wanted to do this. You jumped in, you started the business, you followed a, a program. So you weren't wasting thousands of your own money to try to figure it out the, the hard way from trial and error. But when was the first turning point? Like what was the major success that you encountered it doesn't have to be major, but just like, what was something that you thought, oh, wow, this works. Like, I think I'm, I think I'm onto something here. I've achieved something here and I'm going to stick with it. Sure. So yeah, I think my first sale and subsequently the, the sales that came later was that proof of concept that I was on the right track. And like you say, I, I went through that journey where I, it was an emotional journey to start with because I had the right foundations in place. Then I was logical about it and took it from that emotional place to, to work out where I wanted to go. But even then, you still need the proof of concept. You still need to see things work to know that you're on the right path. And that's what happened. When I saw my phone buzz, I didn't see it buzz. Like I got back to my phone that was in my car for my first sale. And I looked at the Shopify notification that was for about £1,000. It was the, the first sale from memory. And that's when it really starts to sink in that I was doing something else at the time. I was, I was working in the 9 to 5 job and I saw that sale notification. And it, it, it was just that realization that, that the, the work I'd put in was absolutely getting me to this moment where I've just made like £300 profit for that one sale. And although I'd done all the work to get to this point to set the business up, at the time while that money was being generated, I was doing something completely different. So it could have been anything that I was doing at the time. And, and that's, that showed me that I was on the right track. It showed me that those sales that were coming in and they started to come in then for £1,000, £2,000, it taught me that this is clearly something that, that is really going to be scalable, that I was on the right track. I was you know, starting to generate some money for, for myself and for my business. And, and I knew that I could just build on that from, from that moment there. And I knew 
to continue with the, the memento, I knew that it was going to be important to celebrate those wins along the way. Your first sale, it, it's a big moment. So I, I celebrated that. And each time I got a, a new sale or a new supplier on board, I, I celebrated those wins because there's these highs and lows throughout the whole business journey. But it's important to give yourself you know, the motivation to continue by patting yourself on the back, realizing when you've done something really, really cool, like sign a new supplier or make a a few sales. And it really taught me, you know, that you need that motivation to keep you going. Then my first real major achievement with my business had to be, you know, a few months down the line where I was then able to leave my nine to five job. So it was from these high ticket sales that kept coming. They were, they were coming at a faster rate. I was able to increase my ad spend. And I'd already always set it for myself that as soon as I had matched or beaten my income from my nine to five job for at least three months in a row, that was the moment I knew I had the confidence to then hand in my notice at my nine to five job and go all in on my on my business. Um, and I reached that you know just a few months after starting Dropship Unlocked, um, and suddenly I had that freedom. So you know, talking about celebrating wins, the biggest win no doubt after starting the, 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 the business was the first Monday morning when I had left my nine to five job and suddenly it was Monday morning and I knew that this was the start of a completely new chapter for the rest of my life and I knew that I had I'd done my last day in a nine to five job and now I was the master of my own destiny. I, I, I could work on what I wanted to work on uh, and that was incredibly liberating, freeing feeling. I was absolutely on the way to that, that freedom and the, the you know, success that I've defined before. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was amazing. And, and I, yeah, the, the way I told my manager was, is a good story. I, I remember pulling him to, to one side and saying that we need to have a one-to-one. And he said, he just knew as soon as, as soon as I said that he just knew that I was leaving because I would never, ever pull him to one side to ask for a one-to-one before. So I sat down with him in this meeting room and I was able to, to say, look, I hadn't said at the time, but I've been creating this business along the side. It's going really well. And now I want, that's the, the path I want to take. It's, it, it's nothing wrong with the job I was in at the time. It's just that I really wanted to pursue this business, really take it seriously and go full time. E- ever since that day, I've never looked back. Don't ever see myself working in a nine to five job again. And yeah, since then I've had much more control over my own life. So you've seen your phone in the car with that thousand pound notification from Shopify from a sale and realizing I've just made 300 pounds profit here and realizing that hang on a sec, whilst that happened, you know, you're in your job trading your time for money still in the nine to five when you could have been anywhere in the world doing anything with your time. And as you know, and said, your success for you is is freedom. So it starts to, again, it's very rational the way you think. And it's very kind of stage by stage. I like that you celebrated that first win, but you, you didn't get ahead of yourself and say, I've made a sale. I'm, you know, I'm throwing in the towel on my day job. I'm quitting. You use that income to supplement it. You worked evenings, weekends on your business and got to the point where you like you see you'd matched or beaten your income for three months straight um, and then said at that point I'm going all in I love it and um, hitting that that milestone a few months later it must have been a, a great morning when you handed in your notice and said to your manager I need that one-to-one the look on their face must have been like what how have you how have you done this how have you escaped to the golden handcuffs the shackles that we're all kept in throughout life and I think it's just liberating isn't it that first Monday morning of freedom is a bit daunting. It's a bit like, oh, what do I do now? Like, there's no structure. There's no direction. There's no boss. There's no, you know, like I'm I'm free. And then, yeah, I, I guess since then, since building your business, I'm sure that it hasn't been a straight path. I don't imagine you woke up on Freedom Monday and then just said, all right, cool. And it was all smooth sailing up to a million pound business from there onwards. So maybe to add some some more kind of depth to this story and your journey around the the actual business itself, were there any significant setbacks or failures that you've experienced along the way that listeners could learn from? Absolutely. There, there were plenty. You know, I, I don't want to paint a picture at all that, it, that it's an easy route to go down, but I, you wouldn't want it to be that way because it's so much more rewarding when, when you ultimately get to the success. You know, I, As you mentioned, I, I did work weekends when I was doing it alongside my nine to five job. I, I'd work a few hours on the weekend. I'd be working an hour before I started work and I'd do some work in the evening as well. So there was work that goes into this it's not get rich quick it, it absolutely means that you will put work in you have to sacrifice a few things and i sacrificed you know perhaps some some things that were you know would have been nice maybe watching netflix or going out with friends 
you know, I sacrificed those things knowing that it was all going to pay off in the long run. And it was hard. And there were plenty of obstacles and difficult setbacks that I went through during the journey. Um, obviously, the wrong business model in the first place, that, that stung because I felt like, what am I doing with my life? It really hurt the first time. Something else that really sticks out with me, a, a big obstacle that I overcame initially was my, when I, this is very early on, actually, probably just within the first month of actually running the business. But uh, I, I had these emails that all came in, in tandem from my suppliers that I just worked hard to sign up. I had about four or five at the time. And these emails all came in on a Friday afternoon, which, by the way, is the worst time you want to see these emails. They, they came last thing on a Friday. And all my suppliers had just, just told me, sorry, we're going to stop supplying you. We've had reports where we've had, we've had the other retailers get in touch with us. And they've said that your website too closely resembles other, uh, their websites and other websites in the industry. And I was, you know, on a Friday afternoon reading this, thinking all that work you've put in, you're starting to get some sales. And now suddenly your suppliers, who are the reason you're able to sell these products, are turning around and saying that they're no longer able to supply you because they've had complaints from other retailers. And that really stung because I was sat there and I couldn't sleep, you know, Friday, Saturday, because I had to wait for Monday to really get in touch with the suppliers and, and overturn this. So it sticks with me, that feeling and, and the fear uh, that I had on that on that Friday evening. I wish I'd never checked my emails last thing on that Friday. And I realized that the whole business was sort of collapsing around me. Really difficult, but I overcame that by by being proactive. And the way I overcame it was by contacting them and explaining to them that that's never my intention to to copy other websites. And look, these are all the changes I've made over the weekend. Because even though it wasn't my intention to copy, there were similarities. And so what was best for me was just to take control of the situation, really think hard about what my what my brand was that I was building, my first store, and you know differentiate myself. So again, you go through difficult times and it actually taught me an amazing lesson. It taught me to think about what does my, my store, what's it about? Um, how can I differentiate myself and make sure that you're, you know, you're not taking inspiration from, from other stores because ultimately you can lose everything. So on the Monday, explained all this and all the suppliers apart from one all accepted that uh, you know, it, was a, it was a misunderstanding and I've made these changes and they're happy to, to go on. So massive relief on that Monday afternoon that they were all okay with it. But I had to be proactive. And I again, I learned that any setbacks like that end up being some of the best lessons that you get because they taught me to think about what I was standing for, what do I want to be as a brand, as the store I was building. And that's definitely led to, to tons more sales in the future. So one of the best things that could have possibly happened to me. So and I learned this, this sort of way of thinking from, from my dad. Um, and realizing that difficult moments actually end up being the best lessons. And the way I learned this is, is the way my dad reacted to a difficult moment that I went went through when I was younger. And this was on a, uh, a Duke of Edinburgh expedition. So it's something in the UK where you go on an expedition, you go walking. It was, a, it was a gold expedition. So it's four days and three nights that you go camping and you walk miles every day. Um, and on the second day of this expedition, we were in the mountains of Snowdonia um, and the weather was terrible. And when the weather's terrible, normally it's even worse times 10 in, in Snowdonia, which is a, a national park in Wales. And we were walking for what felt like hours and hours and hours in this pouring rain, howling wind. We were walking alongside this long lake. I can picture it now, walking alongside this lake with the mountains in front of us. Normally a beautiful scene, but not when the weather was like it was. It must be minus two degrees. The wind was going sideways, so the rain was, was hitting us from the side. And we just kept walking along this lake for, for what felt like hours and hours and hours. At the first, the, the group the group was about five or six of us. Initially, we were laughing about it. We, we had good morale. We could push through it. But after a few hours of getting really battered by the wind and rain, the fun had sort of been sapped from that experience. And I was looking around at the group that, that I was in, and I was sort of the, the most senior out of the group, and I could start to see and tell that there were people that their lips were turning blue, they were going really pale and they're actually starting to slur their words when they were speaking, starting to look quite dazed. And we realized that there were actually the first sort of signs of hypothermia from within the group that we were walking with. So uh, yeah, I had to, had to make a decision. We initially called the, the instructors that were not with us, but we were able to call, but they didn't pick up the phone. So the next thing that we had to do, because we had to act fast, was to call search and rescue for Snowdonia because we really felt like these, you know, hypothermia was getting across the group. 
So we just had to huddle together and, and wait for search and rescue to come and find us in the terrible conditions and, and take us off the mountain. So it's very difficult to, to get across at how difficult of an experience when, when the weather's that bad and when the morale is that low, it's a very difficult experience. And I remember the whole story that, that I pulled from this was when I went home to my family and, and told them, because we, we had to go back early, it all, all failed the, the expedition. I was thinking perhaps, I'll, you know, my dad or mum and dad will you know, give me some sympathy. Um, they'll explain, they'll understand that it was a difficult time. Maybe they'll be uh, you know, proud or, you know, and I'm sure they were. But I remember my mum gave me loads of sympathy. Uh, thank you, mum. Uh, but my dad, she, he, he was completely different about it. And the way he reacted to it was, uh, I remember he just said, good. You know, he's so glad that that experience happened to me. Um, and I remember being surprised at the time, but actually that taught me a really valuable lesson. My dad understood that going through these difficult times when things are really horrible and challenging, they're actually some of the best lessons and some of the best gifts that can happen to you. But in the moment, very, very difficult to see the, the benefits from these actions. But when you look back at difficult times, then you realize that actually... I now try and view them just as my dad does and be good, be grateful for difficult times because they ultimately become some of the best, the best lessons that you, that you, that you learn. Yeah. What a powerful lesson that must've been. It's, it, it's a really, it sounds like a really traumatic time. I was there with you on the mountain then as you were telling that story. And it, it makes you think that you're, if, when you can deal with that level of stress and that level of setback where it's like potentially life threatening, you can absolutely handle it later on in life when some jealous retailer tries to use you know dirty tactics to sabotage your business and they always say that winners focus on winning and losers focus on winners right so if you've got someone nipping at your heels and someone who feels threatened and acts out of scarcity to try and bring you down like happened with you and this whole thing with the retailers that you then or with your suppliers sorry that you then resolved usually it's a sign that you're doing something right because other people are watching and they're they're feeling scared that you know you're taking it so it's Obviously, we don't operate out of that same scarcity mindset, but I think you being able to take lessons from other parts of your life and then say, like, I got through that. I figured that I knew it would make me stronger as a result of it. So when you get hit with something like this in a, in a digital business, yes, of course, it feels bad at first, doesn't it? But you can rise above it and you can start to see the big picture and realize the lesson that you'll learn from it, as you did, is that you can even better differentiate yourself. You can make it so that there's no argument that anyone could say that you've taken anything from any of their business because you've done things totally your own way. And so I'm sure that as a result of that differentiation exercise, you've probably increased your conversion rate, your customers who buy from you probably buy into your brand even more. Your suppliers will love it because you've done something different to the rest of the market. And I just think that that's, that's a great lesson to have learned. And I know that um, in terms of business, like there's one thing going it alone, but also collaborating with others, mentorship, Things like that can be game changers to try and make your business journey a, a success without you having to reinvent the wheel constantly. Did you have any mentors or significant partnerships that helped propel your business forward? And if so, how how did they come into your life? How did that work? Yeah, so we, we, we're building that first store. I certainly wouldn't have built it without the step by step guidance that I had from, from yourself, Lewis, and the the, the dropship unlock mentorship program. It, it taught me what to do when I was completely stuck. Uh, and not only did it give me the tactical guidance to know exactly what step to take next to build one of these businesses, it was also the the uh, the emotional guidance and getting the mindset right from the very start, knowing that it's not a get-rich-quick scheme, knowing that you're going to put work in. And having that mindset was was invaluable. And also the access to you, Lewis, on the Q&A calls was amazing to ask you questions directly as soon as they came up. So collaborations and partnerships, absolutely. I think my biggest mistake that I made when I first started my first business was that I tried to do it all alone. And I thought that I could make it work by myself just with the power of um, you know, hard work. But what I've really learned is to create anything valuable in, in, in the world um, is you have to do it with brilliant people around you. And um, I've definitely learned that lesson. And that's what the, the mentorship program gave me. It gave me brilliant people around me immediately that I could call on that I could work with to, to get to my goals. Um, I knew that I could put in the hard work, but what I was lacking was structure. Um, I, I had lots of energy. I was ready to give it my all. I, I was ready to start a business, but I needed the structure. I needed the guidance to tell me what to do next so I could actually channel all that energy, 
channel all that hard work into a path that was already proven. Um, and that's what the, the guidance that Dropship Unlock gave me. So I knew that I'd put in the work and the other end of the deal, Dropship Unlock was giving me the support and giving me the step-by-step guidance to get me to where I wanted to get to. Well, you definitely made the most of it. I remember those Q&A calls very vividly and you turning up to every single one of them and taking it extremely seriously and asking all the right questions at the right point and you know, not being afraid to turn up and say, I'm stuck, this has stumped me. And I think sometimes pe- people do think that like th- there's this myth that you think I just have to work extremely hard. The answers are out there and I can piece it all together yourself to myself. And you possibly can, but it might take months or even years of trial and error and failure to get there. So it's not just about hard work, like you say, it's that structure and guidance and then channeling that hard work into something that's proven to work and having the people around you to ask when you get stuck. I think people often come into our program thinking that the 30 plus hours of video tutorials is the bit that they need the most. And of course, that's valuable because that provides the structure. But what they often need is the answers when they get stuck, when things don't go to plan. And that's the community. It's the community that brings it to life. It's the Q&A calls, the live support sessions that really helps, the collaboration calls we have, the live meetups, you know. So I think you've really made the most of it. You, you definitely did that. You channeled it. And that's why you're succeeding as, as well as you are. And I know that you've transitioned from initially just single business owner to an owner of multiple ventures now and even a coach with us at Dropship Unlocks. How did your daily life and mindset shift to go from that kind of solo entrepreneur through to starting to build out your empire like what does what had to change for you and what does a typical day look like now compared to your previous nine to five routine well it's completely different now it's uh yeah unrecognizable because i have that autonomy over my time and um, so you know, I, I still work very hard of, of course but it's on things that i want to work on and i get a lot of reward you know a lot of value out of the work that i do now and um, so that had to come from a shift uh, in mindset there's, there's a lot of people that think and I certainly had this myself was work equals bad and um, is the mindset that perhaps you go into your career with and um, but I've overcome that now to see that uh, you know you can really enjoy your work especially when you're working on what some th- things that you love to do um so now as you mentioned earlier in the podcast I've now recently hit over a million pounds in revenue since starting my businesses um I've partnered with with a business partner to to open a second store um, and the main thing that, that's really come out of all of that, the numbers are great, the multiple businesses are great. The main thing is that control over my time that I have now, and I've got control over my location. So I can work from anywhere and I can do my work on the times that suit me as well. Uh, and that was always super important to me for, from the start. And, and I've got myself to that position now, absolutely. Um, and the work that I do, I, I get to, to work on things that I love and I get to be around people that have the same values as me. Whereas before the, the passive life, the, the nine to five life, you're thrust into environments around people that you don't necessarily align with. But now I can really be around people with the same values. And that, that's an incredible uh, atmosphere to be around. And it's just going to continue to to lift me up is, is the plan. Um, so yeah, so the way I sort of set my my, my days now is it, set up to suit me. And I've sort of learned how I, how I operate best. I like to get up early and, and to exercise and then to get start working early um, i'm more of a morning person than a, a night owl so i can choose that to go up off to the gym at 6 30 in the morning and be sat down ready to start working a, a, an hour later is the way that i like to work um and, and the way i do it is i sort of run my e-commerce businesses now as an owner instead of a manager so i'm not you know although i'm involved a little bit i i, I own those businesses so they are like investments and they're assets that pay me uh, constant income every month, uh, whereas I don't need to be continually looking and 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 working on those e-commerce businesses. I don't need to answer phone calls from customers. Don't need to answer live chats. So it doesn't require me to be on the business all the time. You know, I've hired virtual assistants now, so those tasks are taken care of. And across the t- the two stores that we've got now, we've got multiple virtual assistants that are doing all those day to day jobs, so that those businesses are investments for me and they're cash generating businesses while I can choose where I work on to improve the businesses and I can choose you know, how I spend my time as well. So if I work on the business for, for a little bit every day, but now I, I can structure my week so that I'm spending lots of time coaching others and helping others. Um, now with the Dropship Unlocked community, um, I'm around the community every day. I'm speaking with people on one-to-one calls. I'm speaking to them on, on Q&A calls. 
um, and I'm able to uh, help out others to generate their own cash generating machines and um, that these e-commerce businesses that they are. So as well as you know, overseeing the running of the e-commerce businesses, um, my, my days now are you know about recording podcast episodes with you, Lewis. It's about thinking about how we can improve Dropship Unlocked, how can we can improve the community, um, as well as all the coaching calls that happen every week within the business. Yeah, very different week to how it used to look then with your nine to five. And I think what you say around your values and being around the people who now align with the same values as you and, and have the same values is so noticeable for me at Dropship Unlocked because you bring in a um, a, an energy with you that other people want to be around you. You know, you you help lift other people up. It's uh, like you're such a fantastic addition and contribution, not just to to the company, but to the community and all of the members in it. I know I'd speak for all of them who've ever had an interaction with you, and I because I hear it firsthand. You know, directly from in our community where they say how helpful and supportive and positive and patient you've been. So it's great to see that you've you've created you've almost achieved well you, you have achieved what your definition of success was you've achieved freedom whether that's time freedom because like you say you you now are, are, aren't in your own businesses you've, you've removed yourself from them you've got location freedom because you could do the podcast from anywhere in the world right you've got financial freedom because you have two cash flow generating businesses now as well and so it's great that you're able to now give back because as you kind of progress up the Maslow's hierarchy of need you get to that point where one of the most fulfilling things you can do is to give back and to help others and to to, to almost elevate yourself to that level and, and achieve fulfillment and um, the transition from manager of a store to owner is a big one I know that that's something that holds people back I see business owners who are in the hundreds of thousands of pounds per month level with their e-commerce stores who still can't quite relinquish that control of like live chat or customer support or emails and I think once you do that the headspace that you free up, like you said, is just so great because you can then think about what you want to spend your time on. So you mentioned being a, a coach at Dropship Unlocked. What motivated you to start coaching and sharing your knowledge with others then? Like how's this role of helping others, guiding others, how is that enriching your entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, it's a question I get quite often. So uh, I, I work with Dropship Unlocked for a few reasons. The main reason is is because of how rewarding the, the nature of the work is. Um, I remember very well, that hopefully I've been able to articulate in this episode, that feeling of being stuck and not knowing at all where you want to be in life. Just knowing that you've got this drive inside you that you want a better life for yourself and for your family. I remember that feeling. Now that I've run these businesses for a few years, I feel like I've got some knowledge. I've got some experiences that I can share with others. Um, and it's very rewarding to see people in that position that I was in not too long ago and to be able to help them build their own businesses so they can escape that that rat race and escape that feeling of being stuck in the nine to five job. I, I'm, I'm now in a position where I can help and I want to make the most of that opportunity that I have. You know, the community that we've built with within the masterclass is, is incredible. Uh, and being a part of that community is amazing, especially when we do the live meetups. You know, the people that we're around in the masterclass They've signed up to Dropship or not because they've got the similar values to us. They they want a better life for themselves. And these people we can resonate with and get on with so quickly because they're so similar to us with, with the values that they have. So it's just a pleasure to be part of that community. And um, also it means that I'm around business owners every day and I work closely with you, Lewis. So seeing how you operate and, and being around you has been a real gift um, as part of the work with Dropship Unlocked as well. Um, it, as well, teaching others has actually increased my rate of learning more than anything else. I, I, I'm confident that I, I learn more than I actually teach now, even being a, a coach. Um, it's, it's, it's incredible. On those Q&A calls, I, I learned so much from other people's experiences, and that's just, just helping. And it's, it's, a, it's a really good environment of sharing knowledge. Um, so being in that environment is, is fantastic. And I've learned so much since, since joining. Um, but the, the only reason I can do this and get the rewards and be around the community and be, be coaching others is because I've made it possible with the e-commerce businesses that I run and the style of business that I like to run, which is, as I say, it's as a, an owner instead of a manager. Um, so without that, I wouldn't be able to do the coaching. I wouldn't be able to have the rewarding be around the community because I have to get it to a point where you know, it's half an hour per day, if that on the e-commerce businesses, which is just checking in with the team, checking that we're reaching our 
potential checking that we re- the performance is good, paying some invoices, that sort of thing. And because it's running that way, then I've got time that I can then help others and I can help coach others with the content that we produce, but also in the coaching calls that I do. Um, so yeah, it, it's so so rewarding. Again, people struggle, I think, to see how rewarding it is um, if they're in that mindset of work equals bad um, and you can't possibly enjoy work. But actually, once you've got, you know, I've got these cash generating businesses that pay me an income all the time. I've, I've then got the choice of what, how do I want to spend this extra time? And I can't think of a better way to grow as a person or to get rewarding and, and, and to be around people that I, I really value other than being a coach and, and do the things that I do now. Yeah, I 100% can re- resonate with that because I would feel lost, I think. And I did feel lost for a time when I moved out to, uh, to Thailand and Vietnam and had my business is just generating cash. But then when you do remove yourself from an owner, you're like, well, what do I do next? Where And you realize that a lot of your fulfillment came from the challenge, the build. And so there are other ways of finding that fulfillment through building another business, and especially one that directly can help people kind of get onto that first rung of the ladder that helped you get to where you are so that you're in the other country in the first place running your business. So I totally resonate with that. And I get that question a lot as well. Like why, why run Dropship Unlocked if you're you know, running your business yourself already. And I think the answer to that is because is, is almost like, just wait and you'll see, just wait. <laughs> wait till you're there at that point, at that first milestone where you have your business and you're like, okay, I don't need to do this due to the finances anymore. Although of course, other businesses bring in cash flow. So you're not like, if you're an entrepreneur, you tend to just continue to build and grow. But it's the, like you said, yeah, it's keeping your skills sharp. You know, the two businesses are very related to each other, right? because one is teaching the concepts that the other is effectively a case study for. So I love that. Yeah, the more you teach, the more you learn, because you have to, you're going to get questions about what's changing right now, what's happening. And we see those every day in our community. So it allows us at Dropship Unlocked to keep at the forefront of what's happening in the world of e-commerce and keep everyone updated. So it's a, it's an exciting trajectory that you're on, James. It's, I mean, with all the success that you've achieved so far, hitting that first million pound milestone, the question on my mind is what's next? Like what new heights are you aiming for to reach with your business and personally as well? So for me, it's all about continued progress uh, and never ending learning. So just can keep continuing to develop myself. Um, and the way you, I've found to develop myself is through entrepreneurial pursuits. You learn so much about yourself. You grow so much as, as a person when you run businesses and they say you're either earning or you're learning. And that's so true whenever you're building one of these businesses. So to just continue learning really is the aim. And to do that, I'll, I'll scale the two e-commerce businesses that, I, that I'm running. My, my primary straw at the moment, it's on track to do 100K every month revenue consistently this year. Um, and my second store is actually looking promising to, to overtake that with the opportunities that we've come across so far. So yeah, really exciting in, in terms of the e-commerce businesses. I'll continue to scale those. As for my work with Dropship Unlocked, we, you know, we're on a mission together, Lewis, to to be the best in the UK, the best e-commerce learning provider. Um, I think we're, you know, if we're not there, we're, we're well on the way to doing that. And so through this podcast, through the community that we're building, um, you know, we want to we want to do that and really give as many people as possible the opportunity that I came across early in my journey, where it, a step by step guidance program is there for you. A community that genuinely cares about your success is there for you if you are willing to put in the work. So I, I love being part of it. I love the values that you stand for, Lewis. So you know, a big part of my life moving forward is going to be growing Dropship Unlocked um, and and helping as many people as we can through the coaching program that we that we provide. So yeah, spending plenty of time r- running the e-commerce businesses, learning from my lessons that will inevitably come over the next few years of scaling those businesses, and feeding all of those lessons running these seven figure businesses into the coaching that we can provide at dropship unlocked so we want to really be the best in class training we want to be the best in class e-commerce learning and online business training provider um, and the way we do that is to have the actual day-to-day experience that we're that we're experiencing every day by running these businesses so that's what i want to do continue my learning continue my growth feeding all of that learning and growth into building this incredible community that we've got that we're growing so far um, and I think that's that's what we're on track to do. Definitely. Yeah. And the two work hand in hand, don't they? Like you say, it's a real nice uh, marriage of the two business models. It works really well. And I, I absolutely love running both types of the businesses. So it's great to hear. In terms of your 
like if you were going back to the previous version of James in the interview that where we first had when you first joined the program and we kind of asked you those very early questions which we could probably link in the description below this episode couldn't we for anyone who hasn't seen that first interview it's quite eye-opening to go back and watch that one and but if you if you could jump back now and jump on a zoom call with the with the pr- earlier version of James and give him some advice are there any things that you might say because I think some of our listeners who are where you were then or maybe even earlier in their journey than where you were then maybe they haven't even joined a program yet and, and started and they're dreaming of a different life like you were when you were in the nine to five at the housing association what kind of advice would you give yeah so I keep my advice simple and it's just to take action some form of action I've taken a lot of wrong action along the way and I will continue to do so I'm sure moving forward but the key for me is that you're taking some form of action because you'll learn from whatever you do and um, so you know even if it's that's even if it's starting a business model and it's the wrong type of business model you still will look back on it as being fantastic that you took some form of action the alternative is that you just stay on the trajectory that you're on right now and if you don't feel excited about where that trajectory is taking you then that's motivation to to take some form of action so think about creating that mental pain for yourself if you need to give you give yourself that to 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 inspire you to a you know, better future and and think about how, what action can you take no matter how small it is i think there's only so much preparation you can do before action ultimately takes over there's only so many books you can read only so many podcasts you can listen to um but ultimately there needs to be some form of action that teaches you a lot um it took a lot for me to start so you know i know that it's difficult and i hopefully you could tell that there was a time in my life where I knew something was wrong, but it took a lot of courage to actually take the first step. It's not easy, even even when you know you, you need to do something. Um, but I think you just need to give yourself the confidence. And I'd love to say this to my previous self, give, give myself the confidence that there is absolutely a way to what you want to achieve and you will find it. As long as you just take consistent action, try to get 1% better every day and you'll be amazed at how far you can get within just a few short years. You know, consistency and compounding, it, it all takes over. Once you start doing little actions every day, the rest will take care of itself. Uh, yeah, and where you can be in a few years' time is it is scary, really, how, how fast and how far you can get once you put in work and just set your sights on becoming a little bit better every day. So that's what I'd really like to instill in my younger self because I wouldn't have been able to say all this when I was younger. You, you don't really understand the lessons you're learning along the way. If I could teach and speak to that person, I'd say, you know, give yourself a confident, you'll find a way, you just need to take action and learn from every lesson and pivot from all the difficult obstacles that, that come up along the way. Um, yeah, and, and don't delay, really. I think <laughs> knowing what I know now, the earlier you start, the better, really. The longer you delay, the, the longer you're, you're delaying your inevitable success. So, you know, don't hang around. I wish I'd started earlier. I wish I didn't wait so long. <laughs> I wish I'd just taken some form of action no matter what it was quicker in my journey um, and that, that would have served me very well I'd, I'd be even further um, you know a lot a lot further if I just started a bit earlier in my in my journey and um, so yeah I, I guess I tell myself it will be tough but you're strong enough to uh, to get through that and as long as you've got a strong enough reason why why you want to achieve then you can achieve anything that you want anyone can achieve what I've achieved it, it, it's nothing special about me I've you know I've just taken what I've learned and I've had a very strong clear reason why I needed to get to where I wanted to get to and as long as you create that for yourself, you can achieve that as well, as has been in my experience. So, you know, I'm still on my journey. You know, I'm, I think um, when you listen to podcast interviews, it's easy to think that you're the finished article when you when you do like a, an interview like this. Um, but I'm still on my own journey and I always will be. I'll never be done. I'll, I'll always be constantly improving, but I'm going to enjoy the journey along the way. Uh, and that's the most important thing. Just focus on 1%, but make sure you enjoy the journey all the way towards your destination yeah exactly and those compounding that iterative process of always growing is so important and it's difficult at the time when you're thinking about doing this it's difficult to know how you will feel on the other side of it because it's like you're staring out into space into the unknown the abyss you think well will it work will i become an entrepreneur will i be happy will i be successful but like you say you pondered and you thought and you tried convinced yourself to and and then not to and then to again to take the leap but I mean, I'm personally so glad that you did, not only for you and your success and your future, but also because we got to meet. And, you know, I, I say the same for everybody else that I've met within our program. You know, had you not joined and made that leap of faith and that decision, we'd never have met. 
and perhaps you'd never be on the trajectory that you are now. So it's, it's such a, uh, looking back, it's such a great thing that you did, such a great move that you made. And I just urge any other listeners out there right now who are maybe in the position that you were before, if they're thinking about that leap, then, you know, it's okay on the other side. Like it's fun. It's, it's a great, it's a great experience. And like you say, we're not the finished article, but we've, we've kind of got over that first hurdle. And if you're really deliberating on that first thing, that scary moment of starting and your life will be so much better because of it, if you are willing to ride the ups and the downs and there will be bumps in the road. So just be aware of that, but it's so much better with other people around you who are also on that journey too. So Finally, James, for someone else who is listening right now, maybe they're in the gym, maybe they're running, maybe they're out for a walk, they're in the car, they've got this podcast on and they're listening right now and they're feeling inspired and they don't know what step to take first. What specific actionable advice would you give to someone who can start moving towards their dream of financial and time freedom today? It's just taking some form of action after listening to this podcast episode. You'll thank yourself for it for years to come. Um, you know, it's just about one small step. It doesn't need to be suddenly leave your job and, and go and start this business. I'm not saying that at all. It's just one simple action and then just continue to improve yourself every day and you'll be amazed at how far you get. And Lewis, you, you've made it more simple than ever for people to actually get started with, with e-commerce businesses now. So actually people can just pick up a, a book that you've written and it gives them the step-by-step -step process and it will give them access to the Dropship Unlock Launchpad community. Um, obviously, the, the masterclass is there if people really want the in-depth step-by-step videos and the really engaged community. But if you want to take just one form of action that's a super low barrier to entry and you, you just get started with a simple book, then that's where I'd recommend you start. Um, and so your book is called The Home Turf Advantage, Lewis. Um, and people can pick up that book today, a digital copy, within five minutes if you go to htabook.com. Enjoying the podcast? We'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment or a review and we might just feature it on an upcoming episode. Also, for detailed show notes and resources, head to dropshipunlock.com forward slash podcast. If you found value from any episode of this podcast, please take just 10 seconds to leave us a quick five-star review on your podcast app of choice. It helps us more than you could imagine. And who knows, you might just hear your comments on the show. Thanks for being part of our community. Your support helps us keep delivering a new episode every week. Okay, we're at that part of the episode now where we'll answer a question that's coming from a listener. So thank you, Tristan, for asking your question. Remember, if you want to get your questions answered on the podcast, all you need to do is leave a comment underneath the YouTube version of this episode. So this week, the question has come in from Tristan. So Tristan has asked, Lewis, uh, I've, been, I've been listening to your podcast for a while now, and I love the stories of success, but I still feel paralyzed by the fear of failure. So what if I invest my time and my money and it doesn't work out? Yeah, it's a very topical question, Tristan. And thank you for asking it. You aren't the only one that feels that way. We all felt that way when we were staring out into the abyss. So it's great that you've asked that question ready for today's episode because it's exactly what we talked about, right? Every entrepreneur on their journey will face setbacks. You might as well just accept it and embrace it because the key to success with this is not to avoid failure. But it's what you do when you hit that inevitable failure is how you learn from it, how you adapt from it. So think maybe reframing your, your, your version, your thinking around what failure means. What if it doesn't work? And seeing what every single setback that I encounter is just a setup for a comeback. Just listen to how James overcame the setbacks that he faced in today's chat that we had. Every single time that when you think about what eventually happened, it actually helped him. And if he hadn't have encountered that setback earlier in his journey, then perhaps he would have not reached the heights he's at. Perhaps there would have been some complacency there. So the key is to start small. Try and manage your risks. Try and manage how big those failures can be and how far the pendulum swings, right? Because if you just dip your toes in, it's going to minimize your losses. And when you make those inevitable failures, they're not going to be huge and costly. James faced similar fears and took calculated steps along the way. You know, he, he said about uh, either matching or exceeding his monthly income for at least three months before he went and took the risk of or the risk <laughs> of handing in his notice and going into entrepreneurship full time. And because of that, that cautious optimism, he eventually got there, he got the proof of concept and he it led to significant reward. So it was great uh, conversation. And I think Tristan, maybe even just re-listening to today's conversation with that question in mind could really help you. 
also it's where you're surrounding yourself. If you're around other people who don't believe in what you're trying to do and they haven't made it work themselves, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. But if you can surround yourself with a supportive community of like-minded entrepreneurs, knowing that you're not alone, then a community like the one at Dropship Unlocked can give you not just the guidance and the, the support and the structure to help you channel that hard work into a model that is proven so you're not reinventing the wheel and risking failure on that front but also you're surrounded by reassuring positive minded entrepreneurs who've all got those same shared experiences that you had and it will just make your journey to get there so much better so don't be worried about failures Tristan be worried about how you react to them and what you take from them thanks Lewis yeah the power of communities is unbelievable and uh, it will change your mindset just being around people with a different mindset so Thank you for your question, Tristan. And now we're going to highlight a recent review that we've had in for the podcast. Uh, so a big thank you to Steve Crew 7882 uh, That's a YouTube handle. So thank you for leaving your thoughts underneath a recent YouTube uh, video. So you know, leave a comment if you enjoyed the video today. Uh, so Steve Crew said, as always, a great session, Lewis and James. Love the whole theme around just taking action. Often hard when trying something new, but something you always look back on and wish you'd acted sooner. Thank you so much for your review, Steve. It means a lot and uh, really glad to hear that you've been enjoying the podcast as well. Do you want a chance to join our elite Masterclass community for free? If so, simply leave us a review for the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Check out episode 52 of the podcast for full details to enter that competition. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Dropship Unlocked podcast. We hope you're walking away with insights and inspiration. To kickstart your e-commerce journey, grab a copy of my book, The Home Turf Advantage at htabook.com. It's a distilled guide based on real experience to help you build your e-commerce venture. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more strategies and success stories. And if you like what you heard, a five-star review would mean the world to us and you might just get a shout out on an upcoming episode. And finally, thank you for deciding to spend your time with us today. We can't wait to bring you more insights on the next episode of the Dropship Unlocked podcast.